Welcome to the Dr. Mudgill Podcast. This is episode 89. We are now in August. It's been a fun week. Uh, it's been a fun week seeing patients. Um, been a busy week. Caught a little bit of uh, the fish concert last night at Madison Square Garden, so that was a good time. Uh, met, went with an old buddy, which is always fun. Uh, taking my wife to see Pink tonight. Um, so lots of fun stuff. And then, uh, you know, to round out the week, my New York City office tomorrow. Um, but this podcast is going to be uh, an informative one. So this morning, I had the pleasure of uh, doing a local TV uh, news segment about retinoids. And, uh, you know, the questions that the host asked were great. And uh, I thought it would be actually good to make a podcast about this while this information is all fresh in my mind. And, um, you know, it is a question I get asked a ton about. Uh, I'm sure any of you folks out there who are into anti-aging skincare, um, you've heard of retinoids and retinols and, are, you know, your head may be spinning with a variety of products that are out there and, you know, which one you should be using and all that sort of stuff. So this podcast is all about retinoids. Um, so first thing is, uh, so really there's like two categories that people generally use for this. Again, there are retinoids and there's a retinol. So both of these are actually derived from vitamin A. Um, so they're vitamin A based products that interact with the cells in our skin and they stimulate a bunch of cosmetic events which are favorable. So for instance, they help to uncloud your pores, they help to decrease pore size. Um, these are fundamentally acne medications. So, you know, they help with acne, but when patients were using it for acne, there were all of these other benefits that were noted. So, you know, uncloud your pores, decrease pore size, help your skin to micro exfoliate, um, which is basically like giving yourself like a mini microscopic chemical peel when you use it. Um, it stimulates collagen, which does a bunch of things. One is it makes your skin just appear more robust and healthy. It also helps to prevent fine lines. Um, so these are all like major attributes of retinoids and retinol. But the difference between the two is potency. So retinoids are super potent and retinols are pretty weak. Um, so retinoids, you need a prescription for. You go to your dermatologist. They will give you a prescription. For most of my patients, nearly all, unless someone specifically asks for something stronger. I use like the lowest strength retinoid, which is a generic tretinoin, 0.025%. Um, I find that works well for acne and also works very well for just general anti-aging skincare. Um, some of my patients do want more, uh, a stronger retinoid. So I will prescribe it if someone asks for it. But to, in my mind, it really just increases your risk of getting, you know, adverse effects from the retinoid, which I'll go over with you in a little bit towards the end of the podcast. Um, retinols are what are found in various cosmeceuticals, stuff that you get over the counter from like your local pharmacy or Sephora. And yes, they have benefit, but you know, they are not nearly as beneficial as a prescription strength retinoid. So for my cosmetic patients, you know, patients that come to see me for Botox or for laser, for fillers or those sorts of things, I always have those patients on a prescription retinoid. Um, it's, it's one of the major pillars of my anti-aging strategy, which has like three parts to it. One is using some kind of retinoid at night. Um, the second part of that is wearing a titanium or zinc containing SPF 30 sunscreen every morning. Um, so sunscreen should be SPF 30 and have a barrier component, a mineral component. Um, and the third thing is preventive Botox when the time is right. Those three things are scientifically proven to help prevent our skin from aging. Um, all of that other stuff that you see out there, like the vitamin C and E serums and, you know, this serum and that serum, um, you know, they're not, not saying that they hurt your skin. They're not bad for your skin. But if you're not doing the three things I just described, you really have no business doing the other things. You're just kind of just like wasting money. Um, you're, and you're much better off just focusing on those three pillars that I just described. Um, so one of the other questions that was asked of me was, uh, and this was actually a very good question because a lot of folks don't know the answer to this. And it's a, how do you actually use your retinoid? Now, what I frequently see is just folks are overusing it. They're just slathering it all over their skin. And when you do that, you get a lot of irritation. Your skin can dry. Um, you can actually break out a little bit if you overuse a retinoid. Um, so really less is more when it comes to retinoids. So what I advise my patients to do is generally use a half a green pea size amount to, uncover, to cover your entire face. And the way you do that is you put a little dollop that's about half the size of a green pea in your palm, you stick your finger in it, make little dots on your face and massage it in. And that's really all you need. Now, even doing that little amount, some folks can't use a retinoid every day. Some folks are able to use it every other day. Some folks are only able to use it once or twice a week. 
Some folks uh, have to mix it 50-50 with a moisturizer to be able to use it. You just have to listen to your skin. So folks with oily skin generally can tolerate uh, you know, more frequent use of a retinoid. Folks with drier, more sensitive skin may only be able to use it a couple of times a week and may have to dilute it out with uh, a nighttime moisturizer. Um, the other question that was asked, I don't, even th I don't think this was actually asked on the, on the segment, but what products should you avoid using when you're using a retinoid? So a lot of my patients have these very complex regimens that are like 10 steps. That's way too much. So really, you know, what you should do is you wash your face twice a day, use a retinoid at night. If you can tolerate it every night, if you can't use it the nights that you can and wear a sunscreen in the morning, that's basically all you need. Um, like I said, all of that other stuff, like this serum, that serum, you know, this toner, all, all that sort of stuff is really unnecessary to be perfectly honest. And what ends up happening is if you're using a retinoid and all of this other stuff, you're much more prone to getting to irritating your skin. So things that should be avoided are generally like acids, you know, if you just think of it like that. So retinoids like to work best in a slightly higher pH environment. So you want to avoid things like alpha hydroxy acid, which is glycolic acids in a lot of skincare products. Beta hydroxy acid, which is uh, salicylic acid, which is also in a lot of like acne products. Vitamin C is an acid, so you don't want to use those things together. Um, particularly like the the first two things I mentioned, the alpha hydroxy acid and the beta hydroxy acid, those are also very drying and potentially irritating to the skin. So if you throw a retinoid on top of that, it's like a perfect storm for your skin to get irritated. Um, and the last thing we talked about was was the concept of purging. So like you know when when you, sometimes when you use a retinoid, your skin if you have acne, it kind of brings the acne to the surface um, or your skin can get irritated or flaky. Um, the way I really view it is purging is essentially inflammation that's in your skin. And, you know, inflammation is not a good thing. You don't want your skin to be inflamed. So you really have to listen to your skin um, and kind of titrate your way up as you build a tolerance to using a retinoid. You know, I used the analogy this morning of, you know, going to the gym. You know, when you go to the gym, you're not going to start bench pressing 225 pounds from the get-go. You have to work your way up. You, know, you start with the bar, then you start with one plate, then you start, you know, kind of working your way up to benching, you know, two plates or uh, with 225 pounds. It's the same thing with a retinoid. You, you know, you generally shouldn't start by using it every night. You use it, you know, say you use it tonight. Tomorrow your skin is dry, flaky, or irritated. Take the day off, let your skin recover. When it recovers, try it again. Maybe try using half the amount or mixing with the moisturizer. You got to kind of find your sweet spot with a retinoid. Everyone is different. Um, also, you may be able to use more retinoids uh, in the summer months when the air is more humid and your skin is more, you know, isn't as dry than in the winter months when all that forced heat and stuff really dries the skin out. So... That's my spiel on retinoids. Um, I hope if any of you have any questions about that, you can just drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them either like an Instagram post or a YouTube short or something like that. Um, so with that, I hope you all have a wonderful, restful weekend. You know, summer's winding down, so you can try to squeeze as much juice out of the weekends as possible. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Let's get it.